morning guys, Tammy Trayer, TrayerWilderness.com and TrayerWildernessAcademy.com. Ah, oh, I'm excited about today. We have a special event going to take place. I'm going to do a giveaway this, this morning and um, I'm going to wait here a little bit and have some of you come on and join me and I am going to shut off my Wi-Fi on... Ooh, actually, I may leave it on. We're going to see. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Tammy. I'm just waiting a little bit to see if some other people pop on before I get things going. And of course, my machine is freezing up on me. So I've got a lot of equipment going on this morning trying to pull this off on my own. So you're going to have to bear with me here, especially when it comes time for the giveaway because I am going to be uh, scrambling a little bit, but it might, hopefully it will go smoothly. Uh, let me just see here. I wanted to go on here and let's see if I can get the live to come up. How are you guys doing this morning and what is your favorite thing to can? We're going to talk about unplugging today, but I'm also going to do a little bit on canning as well. Okay, let's see here. How are you guys doing this morning? And let's see. Okay, now, all right, got a bunch of you on here. I need you guys to um, share with me where you're from. Um, if you're joining in, I'm going to be mentioning this the whole time because when people come on, I can't, unless I, um, uh, they're friends or they are part of Treyer Wilderness's page, um, that they've liked the page, I don't know that they're there. So, um, the only way you get entered in the giveaway today is if you say, hey, and tell me where you're from so I know you are joining me. That way I can get you entered in the giveaway. Um... Canning beets right now in Idaho. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Red beets are one of my favorites. I like to make dill pickles. Fantastic. I love to can our chili sauce. It's actually um, a chili sauce. We use it like a salsa. We use it in all kinds of stuff. The recipe is on our website. And I love canning our hot sauce. And quite honestly, I love canning everything. It's just something that's really uh, relaxing to me. It's a full day project as you guys all know, but it's just something that's very relaxing and very enjoyable to me. Um, and this is the time of year. Everything is starting to come in and um, what a great way to feed your family by pulling jars off your canning shelves. I still have chili sauce and carrots and pickles on my canning shelf from last year's stock. So it's really nice when you can have abundance. It enables you to share it and gift it and bless others. So that's a really awesome thing. Um, but canning to us in, in most of our minds is just canning individual um, vegetables and um, not necessarily, maybe a chili sauce or pickles um, or maybe a chow chow, which would be, um, that's a Pennsylvania Dutch recipe, which is like cauliflower, carrots, celery, onions, all pickled together. Um, but my friend uh, Diane over at the um, Canning Diva is her page and canningdiva.com, she actually cans meals and they're not just like your quick throw together meat and potato meals she gets fancy and um, that's why I thought this would be a great way to do the giveaway she mailed me two books one that I reviewed um, and a gift for reviewing her book and also to be able to gift you guys so we will do that a little later today's topic is actually on unplugging and if my computer would be kind enough to cooperate. I was going to read some statistics with to you guys this morning, so bear with me a second here. Everything is not working well and fighting with me, but we're going to get through this. Good morning, Sharon. Glad to have you joining me also. Um, 
And if you, anyone else is out there joining me, you need to tell me where you are from this morning or you won't get entered into the giveaway because I won't know you're out there. And if you haven't liked our page, please do so. And you can also be notified um, when I go live. I go live every Wednesday. That is something that I do as a routine because I absolutely love connecting with you guys and sharing uh, my knowledge. But it's just um, a really nice opportunity to be able to share and also have you guys uh, share your input. Off topic, your hair looks beautiful. Do you make shampoo soap? I am from Southern California. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I have made shampoo soap. As a matter of fact, this week I made charcoal lavender soap for my face. So um, since you asked about that, Jackie, stay tuned and continue watching. Um, one of these weeks I was already thinking about doing it. I may actually make soap on our live um, event or at least share recipes with you guys. Um, so thank you very much and thanks for asking. Shampoo soaps are really good. I have used them. I have not made them. Um, my hair tends to be really dry so being able to make your own soap bar is absolutely fantastic because you can add all the different butters, your shea butters and your oils into the soap which will really um, replenish uh, the oils in your hair. Um, so I do highly encourage that. When you are using any products on your body or on your hair, uh, eliminating all the garbage and the toxins is really important because it travels into your body. So since my illness, that's something I'm very, very conscious of. So I will share more on that. Oh good, I'm glad you're excited, Sharon. Yeah, I would love to share that information because making your own soap is a really awesome thing, um, especially when your finances are low like ours are right now. Um, Getting the materials to make soap is very easy and very inexpensive, and then you end up with a lot of soap. So today's subject was about unplugging. I am going to try to add some pictures in the comments below. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, I'm going to have to close that. I'm going to go into the comments, and I'm going to start sharing photos, if it will allow me. Of course not. Not on there. Let me go on here. Okay, I might have to share my photos afterward, which I'm so disappointed. I have really awesome pictures to show you guys. Good morning, Chad. I know where you're from, and you will get entered in our giveaway. We're going to be doing a giveaway a little bit later. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties trying to accomplish what I want to here this morning, but bear with me. Um, oh, nuts. All right, well, I escaped this weekend, so when this is over, I will share my photos with you guys. Um, I'm a little bummed I can't do it now, and I could do it online, but the photos are still on my iPhone and my iPad, so that's not going to work. All right, so at the end, I'm going to share my photos with you. Um, I really wanted to show them during the, the event because some of them are really funny. But what we did this weekend is we got away and we unplugged. Do you guys understand the value and the importance of unplugging from your electronic devices and your computers and your, uh, your phones, anything? I mean, even the dumb phones, just to be able to walk away and totally be disconnected from everything. Um, do you guys currently do that? And do you understand the importance of it? I, I think it's really um, important that people realize how much of an addiction our equipment has become and I'm I am perfectly guilty of that too um, we did go away this weekend I did not have Wi-Fi um, but I did have my phone because as most of you know I do a lot of video and photo recording of things and that that's basically my journal of life and um, I wanted to document it too and I knew it would be a fun time plus it was something um, very um, empowering for me as you know, I've been having some health issues over the last couple months. They've been sporadic and they've been weird and um, they have left me feeling rather um, weak and wimpy. And um, this weekend I, I felt really great because we hiked back in about two and a half, three miles um, to two beautiful lakes and I had 47 pounds on my back and I did it. <laughs> I was very excited. On the way in, it was pretty hot, 
and pretty crazy. Um, it was 107 degrees and it was vertical most of the way back in there. On the way back out, it was great walking, great hiking, but that heat was really, really um, in, in, crazy and um, we were definitely overheating. But I did it, and we had a fantastic weekend back in there. We were fishing. We had two meals of fish. Um, Mountain Ben and I saw a black bear across the lake, which was amazing, and it was a pretty decent-sized lake, and it was one very large black bear. So that was way cool. I, I just love, I love being able to see that. Um, we also saw a mountain goat and her young, and... Um, Actually, it was a bighorn sheep. Uh, we were joking about that. Uh, there was confusion as to what it was. But um, it was up on the um, cliffs. The mountain man and mountain Ben saw them in the evening the night before. And we had, uh, our friend Brent and I missed out on that. And then we woke up in the morning and they were standing on a lower cliff right by our campsite. So it was really, really awesome. And while we're out there, um, we utilize our multi-flame tool. Um, which has an auger bit on it, so it enables us to drill holes in the logs and the, and the trees that we cut. Um, a lot of dead timber out there, so we made a bench this time. Last time we were out camping, we made a table and uh, a couple benches and things. But we were very equipped this time with lots of big boulders that God placed so uh, beautifully in our location. So we had a huge table rock that was where we uh, did our meals on and a bunch of rocks to sit on and I will share with you the rock that was right in front of my uh, hammock and um, it'll come out on Instagram because it was just amazing. For many of you know I see hearts. Well I saw so many hearts this weekend it was absolutely insane and the big boulder that was right in front of me had four hearts on it that were actually etched in the rock itself and as part of it and it was just really 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 awesome to me. That was God telling me that I was in the right place at the right time and that all was going to be good. So if you guys don't get out and have a chance to do that or you enjoy doing that and you just don't make time, please make time. You know, we are in a financial crisis right now. Things are improving. God is blessing us. Um, but we don't have the money to go on vacation. We don't have the money to be frivolous. But being able to go out and utilize, you know, our strengths, and, and being able to partake on God's gifts that he gives us with the fish and just the surroundings. I mean, the view where we were and the scenery was just breathtaking. Uh, that in and of itself is so um, resetting for our bodies and our minds. And it was a very awesome trip, Tammy. It was very, very awesome. And I so need, we all needed that. And, and, you know, sometimes it's pretty sad when you need to go away, you know, where you're far away from Wi-Fi to disconnect. I'm going to read some statistics to you, and these are pretty eye-opening in my opinion, but I also feel they're very true. Um, it is becoming increasingly obvious that our world is developing an unhealthy attachment to devices. How many agree? Give me some hearts there because I know we are all in this together and we all have unhealthy relationships with our devices. 84% of cell phone users claim they could not go a single day without their device. Now, I disagree with that because there are many days I would love to not have to look at mine. But 67% of cell phone owners check their phone for messages, alerts, or calls even when they don't notice their phone ringing or vibrating. Right? Okay. Studies indicate some mobile device owners check their devices every 6.5 minutes. Sometimes, sometimes I'm guilty. 88% of U.S. consumers use mobile devices as a second screen even while watching television and movies, right? How many of us are guilty? All right, almost half of cell phone owners slept with their phone next to their bed because they wanted to make sure they didn't miss any calls. I don't have it next to my bed to miss any calls. It is my alarm clock. And I did sleep with it this weekend because it was attached to my hip as well as my pistol. Um, especially after we saw the bear. But I did, I do use my phone to read. I know the blue light is bad. I have accepted that the blue light is bad, but that's the only chance I get to read is when it's on my machine. So I do read on my machines. 
Now, traditional TV viewing eats up over six days, 144 hours and 54 minutes worth of time per month. Some researchers have begun labeling cell phone checking as the new yam because of its contagious nature. So if you can hold off getting your children these devices, as long as you can, I highly recommend it. The Mountain Boy has had a dumb phone only, and for years, only because he was traveling um, every other month back to Pennsylvania and different times throughout the year. So, you know, I wanted him to be able to communicate, but he has a dumb phone. Uh, he would like a smartphone, but we've gotten him a Kindle, and you can see how easy it is for even just a Kindle to become an obsession. And as much as these devices can be really, really good for us and really helpful in keeping us productive, um, Evernote is at my beck and call all the time, and it makes it very convenient and helpful for me, but at the same time, We've got to learn to be smart enough, and I think that's the key word there, is smart enough to leave it behind or shut it off or put it on airplane mode or head out into no Wi-Fi areas where we can actually just be ourselves because it's kind of crazy. I, I don't look at it this way. I don't see it that way, but I can see the unhealthy things. Um, one of the things mentioned in this um, article that I was reading it is from becomingminimalist.com. And it's unplug dash please is the, um, it's slash unplug dash please at the end. Good morning, Rachel. <laughs> I hear you, Chad. I know you have no idea what I'm talking about with Evernote, right? <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things it mentioned is that um, some people due to um, trying to, find it. My eyes are not scouring it real quick here. It does say life is still about flesh, blood, and eye contact. So important. One of the things that drives the mountain man and I crazy is when we do get a chance to go out and we're sitting somewhere or, you know, may, even at the ice cream shop and there's, there's people sitting there and there's a couple, there's always couples there together and they're not talking to each other. They've got two phones, one in each hand, you know, and, and they're either communicating with each other that way or they are communicating with other people and not communicating with themselves. That just drives us bonkers. Rachel says, Mountain Ben just got a smartphone at 23 years old. Yep, exactly. I know. And, and it's okay. <laughs> the, the, I didn't get my first, I got my first Blackberry. I held out as long as I could, even with my web design business. And that's why I got it was, um, gosh, 2007, six, because I, uh, I, I just didn't want to be attached to all that stuff. But in order to keep up with my clients, it was necessary. What it says here is it helps Powering down helps remove unhealthy feelings of jealousy, envy, and loneliness. You know, um, it also combats the fear of missing out. And you know, we all have gone through circumstances in our lives. We've all been, ex you know, experienced different things. So there are, we all have triggers. We all have um, hurts. And, and I can totally see it. I don't, it doesn't affect me that way. But I know if you have a low self-esteem due to circumstances in your life, that can be really tough. You know, so they can have such a negative effect on things. And um, there's a lot of people that I follow that actually go on um, device holidays where they actually don't go anywhere, but they shut their apps down and they turn all the notifications off other than their phone and, the, and text messaging. Um, just because of important things coming through. I know Dr. Z does that. Dr. Eric Z does that. And I have a couple other friends that do that. But just something to consider. It is just such an awesome thing. I'm going to try to go in through my browser. I want to share these pictures in the worst way. And it... Oh, here we go. Give me a second. And I'm going to see if I can share my pictures one last time. I'm, I'm really wanting to do this. Because I know you guys will appreciate the photos and it'll make it all click together. And then we'll, we'll continue moving on. So tell me, how many of you guys detach? And how many of you take time to detach? It says that we should detach at least a half an hour or more a day to just walk away 
from our machines. How many of you do that? I do try to do that at night, and it also suggests that in the morning, this was funny how it was put on the um, particular thing I was reading. Um, nobody needed you for the last seven or eight hours, so give one more hour to no devices and start your morning for the hour without anything. And I thought that was really very wise. Um, and I also thought that was funny. Because that's true. Nobody needed us while we were sleeping. Okay, here we go. I might just possibly be able to share photos now. Let's see. If not, I'll do it after the fact. No, it keeps opening up the live jigger. All right, I can't send them. I can't share them. So, no attach, not attached to my phone, but too attached to my laptop. Yeah, I used to be attached to my laptop, and I've found that it's con more convenient to work on my iPad at times, and I kind of try to walk away from them all. Uh, I'll tell you, when it comes down to it for the mountain man and I, my equipment is my, my business. I detach when I'm sleeping. Does that count? Sure. <laughs> That, that's good because you're not getting the blue light. I try to ignore my phone the majority of the day. Smart? I mean, it, most of the stuff that comes across our phones are not important. I have special ringtones for the mountain man and the mountain boy and mountain Ben and, and certain email that I have coming across my phone because those would be important. But other than that, it's like I try. I try really hard not to do that. Um... When the mountain man and I get to the point where we can walk away and actually live a true off-grid life, way back in and unattached from everything, I really feel I will get great pleasure in piling up all of my electronics in the woods and just start shooting at them. <laughs> so, you know, there is a point of part of me that really would like to walk away from it all, but because it's my livelihood, uh, with my web design business, with being able to communicate with you folks, you know, I can't do that right now. I guess the picture didn't attach. No, I can't attach the photos now. So as soon as I am finished, there are like 21 photos I picked out that I'll, I'll start uploading that you guys can check out. So just set the um, video today to notify you on updates. And for those of you watching after the fact, I'm sorry that you're not going to be able to participate in this giveaway, but I hope that you're gaining information and I encourage you to join me next Wednesday at 1030 Pacific Standard Time. And those of you on YouTube, the same, you can join me on Facebook Live every Wednesday at 1030 Pacific Time. And I may also start doing some giveaways on Patreon. So you can check us out there too, patreon.com slash Wilderness. But since you guys have been waiting, and like I said, this is going to get a little tricky here for me now because I've got to try to get all of you added to the giveaway while I am talking. Let's see how many things I can do all at once. I can walk and chew gum, so there might be hope for me. Let me get out of there and go in here. I'm sorry for having to do all the shuffling between equipment as we're talking about unplugging and I've got like six different pieces of equipment in front of me today. <laughs> but um, doing this by myself is a little tricky. Um, I'm going to share this book with you now and we're not going to do the giveaway quite yet. But this is the book that I'm giving away today. This is the Complete Guide to Pressure Canning. And it's everything you need to know to can meats, vegetables, meals in a jar and more. And I really think that this book is a one-stop shop for all of you with your pressure canning. And I know many of you are very fearful of um, pressure canning, but it's really not as complicated and as scary as it's made out to be or as it sounds. Sounds like you need a device for that. <laughs> right. Um, so this book walks you through all aspects of pressure canning. The introduction to the process, the science behind it, the uh, fundamentals to it, the um, spoiling and the different methods. And then she goes into her, and this has all kinds of charts, guys. Um, stability of the vitamins in your food. I mean, she has gone very, very deep in this. And not that it's beyond any of us. I read through this book and I was really impressed with what she's included and she she goes over the equipment for those of you that are brand new to pressure canning she goes over the pressure canner all the the um, 
reasons behind the different um, vents and, and the uh, pressure gauge. It's also, um, for those of you that may not be aware, um, I imagine Tammy is in a higher area in Montana. We're at about 3,000 feet in elevation where we are, but when you're in higher elevations, you need to adjust your canning um, and your pressure. Um, it also goes over different types of canners, the All-American, the Presto, the Miro, and um, then it goes into your first batches. And I'll tell you, her recipes, I'm just going to read some here. Tomato chutney, she has a Bloody Mary mix in here. She has roasted uh, tomatilla, I don't always say that right, chutney. Um, she's got pumpkin and winter squash. She's got pepper, bacon, green beans. She's got all kinds of beans. Lentil sausage, casserole. Very detailed. Oh, yes. Extremely detailed. She's got chicken with red beans and rum. She's got her chicken stock, sausage and bean soup. Then she's got barbecue pulled pork. I mean, these are all things that mm, the average person wouldn't think to can. And her recipes... Um, use all of the things that are in your garden and um, here's uh, she's doing fish she's got beef stroganoff chicken cacciatore chicken pot pie meat and bean chili spaghetti meat sauce many of you do your sauces but she's got soups chicken corn chowder classic goulash base I mean, you won't go wrong with this book. And the recipes, <laughs> am I making you hungry, Sharon? These recipes are just really, really awesome recipes um, with a lot of flavor. And um, most of the people that you find sharing canning recipes, I'm guilty of it too, are just, you know, your plain vegetables. I just like throwing my stuff together later. But having soups on hand and having a meal on hand to be able to feed your family is really awesome. It makes it really convenient. That's one thing. Uh, we didn't can any of our meat this year. And there have been quite a few times where we were either out hunting or um, trapping and we'd come in late and we'd have to throw together f food rather than just emptying a can of already pressure cooked meat into a frying pan, putting some sauce in, putting a couple vegetables in and calling it good. You can pull these jars right off your shelf and you are all ready to go. And your meal is in the pan or in the oven and really handy. But her recipes are just so different than everybody else's. And that's what makes her stand out in, in my eyes is that she, she is canning some of the extremely, um, what's the word I'm looking for? beyond delicious recipes in a jar. So this is what you're going to get today when we do the giveaway. And it is available on um, Amazon. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash pressure canning. So if you don't receive this book and you don't have a good pressure canning book, I would highly recommend this. This is also a great gift. So some of you guys have shared with me the things you like to can. Chad just says um, he loves soups. Um... What are some things that you guys can other than your standard vegetables? Does anybody do meals in a jar? Um, one of the things I like to do with the Thrive Life is to uh, put the dehydrated and freeze-dried foods together in a jar to make a meal that way. And something to think about, since we were talking about getting away and unplugging, um, when you go out camping like we did, Thrive Life food is absolutely a necessity and a, a must for your canning, uh, for your backpacks, and they're great, like I said, to can. I haven't seen a canning book like that before. Yeah, neither have I. I was really, really impressed with the book that she put out. She's, she's really neat and does a, a lot of great things on her channel, a lot of videos. You can see her sometimes on the news networks um, and different uh, TV shows. Uh, but she's also got, I believe, a YouTube channel. Um, so you can check her out that way as well. But it's the canningdiva.com. But yeah, this book is soup to nuts. I mean, complete soup to nuts for pressure canning. It does mention water bath canning a little bit, um, but it's, it's mainly your pressure canning that is discussed in this book. 
But um, when you're packing in in the woods, uh, light meals are really nice and being able to also can and um, store your freeze-dried foods in, in canning jars on your shelf is really nice as well. But we were very thankful for our freeze-dried foods this weekend. Uh, it makes packing in a lot lighter and um, at 107 degrees, the lighter you can go, the better. So <laughs> my guys are big eaters. So I mean, I could eat like a bird out there on the trail, but these guys, they want, they want the uh, table set for a king while they're out in the woods too. So it gets rather interesting. Yeah, her book is very thorough, Sharon. So, we will do the giveaway. I'm going, like I said, this is going to get a little tricky for me because i got to go through comments at the same time as um, I'm entering this. So, share with me some ways that you guys would are going to make an effort to unplug in the future. Can uh, Are there ways... Um, Sometimes you can do it as a fast. Um, I try to stay off my machines on Sundays uh, if I can. I would prefer to do projects on Sundays rather than be attached to my machines. So you're going to have to bear with me. Like I said, this is going to be a little tricky. I am going through and I am um, entering everybody that is present for the drawing. And then I will do a random selection. So if you are out there watching and you haven't told me where you're from, I won't know that you are there. I still want to learn to can fish and meat. Oh, meat is so easy. Stews and soups. Awesome, Sharon. Um, yeah, uh, meats are so, so easy. We just uh, raw pack our meats. Uh, we don't pre-cook them. So you raw pack... All right, I'm going to have to switch over here. You have to just put your burger. Like, I'll put my burger in the canning jar, leave your, like, inch headspace at the top, and um, put your lid, wipe your top off, wipe your rim off, and, and put your lid on, and pressure can them. For us, I think it is an hour and 20 minutes to pressure can our burger. But it creates such wonderful broth inside while it's pressure canning, and it's just that simple. Um, fish is awesome, too. Uh, we have a lot of friends that uh, can salmon. We have not done that yet. So bear with me here. I am having to jump between my devices here so that I can enter you guys in the giveaway. And then whoever wins, if you just want to PM me and let me know... Um, where I am sending it, that would be great. Okay, so let me see here. I'm getting everybody entered. And what do you think of the giveaway? I'm going to be doing more of these. I've got a couple other books and some other gadgets that we will be um, giving away um, upcoming as well. So, okay, got Sharon. How hot is it for you guys? It has cooled down here finally. I think we're going to have a nice early winter here, and I think it's going to be a heavy one, and everybody's probably locally like ready to shoot me for saying that, but I, that's what I'm thinking. It does sound like you need to take a trip, Chad. You definitely need to take a trip. I go camping at least once a week and a month. And completely unplug. My phone is with me, but I don't look at it until I get home. It's just with me for an emergency purpose only. Yep. My dad always canned meals, leftovers. Oh, wow. Okay. That was Teresa that said that. Okay. Interesting. My app is fighting with me here. Of course it is. Like I said, this is going to be interesting because I haven't tried this before. I'm trying to see all of the comments, and it is very hard to do that while I am chatting. Okay, here we go. I can see who's on. All right, I didn't have Jackie, so let's get Jackie on there, because I'm sure Jackie would like to be in on this. Right, Jackie? All right. Uh, let's see. I got everybody in here. Okay, so who's going to win this? 80 here now, supposed to be in the 90s again. 90s here in Cali, cooler today. Okay, yeah. 
Our temperatures thankfully dropped. We had beautiful weather out there the rest of the weekend. Just Friday was 107. I would imagine the rest of the weekend was in the 80s. Really good sleeping weather. All right, so who's ready to win this? I'm going to randomize now and choose a number. Let me just print my screen. Okay, number four is my winner, and it is Sharon. So, Sharon Agee, you are the winner today dun, 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 for the complete guide to pressure canning. So, you can PM me, and we will get that sent out to you. It's all, it's all is good. Keep up the strong work. Thank you. Yes, you. Yes, yes, Sharon, you won. Yay! <laughs> you will definitely not be unhappy with this book. And if you guys are wanting to get m more involved in pressure canning or have never been involved in pressure canning, I truly want you to pick up this book because you will not be um, disappointed in any way, shape, or form. And um, there are a couple canning classes that I am going to put in the description that are not there right now um, when I add the photos to this, okay? Um, there are some great canning classes out there. We also offer canning classes at the Treyer Wilderness Academy um, in our uh, monthly membership, uh, so you can check that out as well. Um, and we will be starting to add individual courses on our Treyer Wilderness Academy versus the membership. We are going to start focusing on independent things because we offer so much there and everybody's needs are different. So we are going to start offering all the classes in individual form so that you can take them there as well. And if you haven't taken our free bread baking class, you can go to treyerwildernessacademy.com and do that also. I am really glad you're excited, Sharon. And guys, I want you to stay tuned and continue to join me on Wednesdays because, like I said, I've got an abundance of things to give away here. And um, I just want to encourage you to embrace these tasks. Pressure canning and water bath canning are two very huge aspects of preparedness and a self-reliant lifestyle. Being able to create our own food and uh, uh, preserve our own food are so huge and being out in the wilds like we were over the weekend you know learning how to identify uh, what is out there and to be able to utilize it I found a lot of um, herbs and uh, medicinal plants because it was higher up so I found calendula and I found uh, arnica up there so it's really exciting when you can find these um, things in the wild and also utilize them dry them get the roots um, back east, we used to eat a lot of burdock root when we were out camping, and out here, uh, we eat cattail roots, which, um, the cattail plant with the big poof at the top, uh, the roots for those are amazing and very tender and really awesome sautéed up, uh, really good enough that we fight over them. <laughs> And um, while we were out there, I know this may turn some of your stomachs, but frog legs are really, really awesome. The mountain man and I had done a um, camping trip in Pennsylvania, and we took no food. We took olive oil and our seasoned salt and garlic, and we lived off of blackberries, and we had a small catfish, and we ate frog legs and cattail roots that weekend. And honestly, you won't find better eating. Frog legs are really, really good. It tastes like chicken. <laughs> so I am going to say a quick prayer for you all and just wish you a good week. And dear Lord, I just thank you for these people taking time out of their busy day. I ask that you bless them in increasing their knowledge and um, being able to provide and uh, just guide their families, and Lord, just help those that are in need, that might be suffering, that might be have, uh, experiencing situations that may have health issues. Just help them, heal them, love them, and just strengthen them in their daily walk. Uh, just keep them safe this week, and uh, just continue to bless them. And Lord, just thank you uh, for 
them being a part of our audience and, and their friendship. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If anyone that needs prayers, please PM me on Facebook. That is Chad. Chad is one of my best prayer warriors. He um, is a genuine prayer warrior. So if you do have prayers, do not hesitate to reach out to Chad. You can PM me anytime if you have prayer needs. And I want you to know that you do not need to disclose your prayer needs. You just need to disclose that you need prayer. Um, God knows what your needs are. I don't need to know. And uh, But we, we are always very feel very blessed to be able to pray for you guys and just to lift you up. We know the power of prayer. We've seen the results of the power of prayer and it's just amazing. And um, I'm really glad you guys joined me. I want you to join me next week. I'm going to talk about um, guns and uh, homestead guns, uh, personal guns, uh, different types of holsters for men and women and just cover some of those topics. Um, it may not be the, something you're interested in, but I'd encourage you to still join me um, to maybe educate yourself. Um, as a woman that carries, it's very difficult to find um, an appropriate holster that fits us well. I used to carry my 357 when we were out um, on these trips and the holster I had was a man's holster and my hips would be so sore by the end of the trip and uh, thank you Chad and um, it, it's it's hard on the body so when you have the right equipment it's really important and I have found some fantastic women's holsters that are much more convenient and easy to carry my mountain man has made me two holsters one for my 380 and one for my 357 that are nice and snug against me I don't have hip issues anymore so it is really important it's just like a pair of shoes and um, I want to go over that stuff with you guys next week and just kind of give you some tips and pointers and um, some resources. So I encourage you to join me. There may be some giveaways next week also. I thank you guys for all your kind words and for joining me and for listening to me ramble on and on and fighting with my equipment. But unplug. Take time to unplug and take time to learn new skills. Right now is a great time to learn how to can anything. Green beans, tomato sauce, um, do something simple. Pickles, there's pickles galore. So um, zucchini, you can uh, uh, chunk up your zucchini and freeze that to make zucchini bread. So that's something really easy that you can do and you can shred your zucchini and freeze it so that you can make your um, smoothies or zucchini breads throughout the winter months. So, guys, thanks so much for joining me. I look really forward to seeing you next week. Oh, good. Thank you, Sharon, and I'm glad to have you. And, um, guys, just take care and have a great week, and God bless.